Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a walking and jumping animation in Scratch. We can see the sample here on the screen. When I press the right arrow, the character walks to the right. When I press the left arrow, the character walks to the left. And when I press the up arrow, the character jumps and then comes back to the original starting spot on the screen. So how do we do this kind of animation in Scratch? Well, this is an important skill to learn in any animation program. One of the first things you do is learn how to make a walking character. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. You should be logged into your account in Scratch. And the first thing you want to do is click the Create button in the upper left corner. This will create a brand new blank project. Let's delete the cat from the project. And we're going to start out by first saving our project. Let's give it the name Walk and Jump. OK, the first step is to set our backdrop. Let's select the stage on the far right. Come over to the backdrops area, and we'll see there's one blank backdrop. What we're going to do is just draw in this area our background. I'm going to take a rectangular shape. Just go ahead and draw. I want this rectangle to be filled kind of with a gray color, so let's desaturate it, choose a slightly gray color. This is going to be my sidewalk. I'm going to take a line tool here and just draw some lines across it that look like lines in the sidewalk. Something like this. Just make it look like there's a surface on which your character can walk. The background won't be moving at all. Next, go ahead and draw something else in this upper area. It could be some green grass, the sky, whatever you want. OK, you can see I've finished my background. Let's go over to Code View. Before we go any further, we want to make sure we save our work. Up here in the upper right is the Save Now button. You should go ahead and click that. Our next step is to choose our sprite from the library. Let's click on the little cat icon in the lower right window of the Sprite window and this will open our library. I'm going to suggest for this exercise that you use this character called Avery Walking. It's important that whatever character you use, the character has to have an animation that makes them look like they're walking. Now, this Ben character here is kind of walking. Um, and if you just put your mouse over some of these other characters, you can see uh, whether or not they look like they're walking. Uh, the cat looks like he's walking a little bit. And so you'll just want to carefully choose a character that has a walking animation built into it. So again, I'm choosing Avery Walking up here as my sprite. Let's make sure Avery is here in the middle of the window. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the costumes. When I look at Avery's costumes and click through them, you can see these costumes, if they are looped and uh, played quickly in an animation, they're going to make Avery look like she's walking, and that's what we want. I'm going to set Avery's size to a little bit smaller than 100. How about 85? And place her here near the bottom edge of the sidewalk. One other thing we need to do with this sprite is we need to create one additional costume where Avery is not walking but just standing. So I'm going to take this fourth animation, I'm going to right click on it, choose Duplicate, and now I have a duplicate of the fourth costume. And I'm going to take the Eraser tool here, and I'm just going to erase these parts of Avery's leg, her knee here on the right side, and her foot on the left side, so that it looks like Avery is just standing there and not walking. I'm also going to rename this costume Avery Standing. Replace that and just put Avery Standing and hit Enter to finish the edit. Now I have five costumes in this sprite. We're now ready to start coding our character. Let's go to the code view. And the first thing we're going to do is use an event. We need the when green flag clicked event. If we look over here on the right, our character Avery is placed at about negative 64 on the Y, and we want her to remain at that position throughout our animation. So the first thing we're going to do under Motion is pull out a set 
y to negative 60 or 65, something like that, right around that area. This will keep Avery on the y-axis at this location, except when she jumps. Remember, the y-axis is up and down, and the x-axis is right and left. We want to control our character using key presses. In order to do that, we're going to bring out the if-else blocks. We're actually going to add three of them. Add the first one, add the second one inside the else portion of the first block, and pull out a third and put it inside the else clause of the second block. So now we have three if-else statements and they are nested one inside the other. The reason we need three is there are three possible key presses that we are going to use in our animation, right, left, and up. In order to use key presses, we're going to go into the sensing palette, pull out three key press blocks, and place them in these diamond-shaped areas inside the if statements. We'll need to choose the right key. We'll choose right for the first one, left arrow for the second, and up arrow for the third. Those are our three possible key presses in this animation. Next, find the control panel and pull out a forever block. It's important that all of these if statements are placed inside of a forever block. That way, as the program runs, it will constantly check if these three keys are being pressed. Now, go to the movement block. If our keys are pressed, we want our character to turn and to move. Choose a point and direction and pull it into each of the first two if statements. If the right arrow is pressed, we want our character to point right, which is the same as the number 90. However, if we have pressed the left arrow, we want the character to turn towards the left, which is negative 90. So let's go ahead and test this. Save your program, click the green flag, and press the arrow key. Oh my goodness, what happens? If I press the right, my character faces right, but if I press left, the character turns upside down and is facing towards the left. That's a problem. What we need to do is set the rotation style to left-right. This is found in the blue motion area. Go down and find set rotation style left right. Now do not put this inside the forever loop, but right above it. Now when we test our program and press right, our character will turn right and left, left, and the character will no longer rotate in a 360 degree rotation. The character will simply face right or left. Now to get our character to move, we're going to use the change x by blocks. When we're going to the right, when we press the right arrow, we should change x by 10. But when we press the left arrow, we want our sprite to change by negative 10. Let's save this now and test it. Sure enough, when we press the right arrow, the character moves to the right. Press to the left, the character moves to the left. Perfect. You've probably noticed that Avery doesn't really look like she's walking. That's because we haven't used the walking costumes as our animation yet. Let's do that now. From the event palette, pull out another wind green flag clicked. Bring out a forever loop. And let's go ahead and change the look of our character by changing a costume and waiting between each change of costume for 0 0.1 seconds. Now when we go and test, we're gonna see that Avery walks. The problem is she never stops walking. To solve this problem, we're going to create a variable. Go to the variable section in your palette Click on make a variable and let's call it walk. The value of this variable will either be true or false. It'll be true when Avery's walking and false when she's not. Pull out two if statements and place them here inside the forever loop. Make sure the next costume and wait block are inside the if statement. Pull out a second if statement and make sure it's underneath, not inside the first if statement. 
go to the operator section, find the equals block, place it inside the if statement. Do it for both if statements. Go back to the variable section, pull out the walk variable and place it inside the left hand side of the equation. On the right hand side, put true in the first if statement and false in the second. Now, if walk is true, then we're going to play the animation. But if walk, if walk is false, let's switch the costume to Avery standing. Remember, we had a fifth costume where Avery is not walking but just standing. Now we need to change the value of this variable when we press the key. In the variable section, find set my variable and we'll place it here just above our forever loop. When the animation starts, we want the variable walk to be set to false. However, when we press the right key, we want to set the walk variable to true. When we press the left key, also set the walk variable to true. And finally, when we press the up arrow, set walk to false. She's not walking when she's jumping. And take one more of these and place it in the else clause inside the third if statement. This else clause will be run when none of the other keys are being pressed. Let's test our program. Save and test. When I press to the left, she'll walk left, press to the right, she walks. But when I'm not pressing any key, the animation won't run. Notice as I test my animation, there's this variable up here, walk, false. Whenever I'm pressing a key, it turns to true. Whenever I'm not pressing a key, it turns to false. We also notice that when I press the up arrow, Avery doesn't jump. We need to fix that next. Find the change Y by and place it here inside key up arrow pressed. We want to change Y Change the number to 100. This will cause Avery to go up by 100 pixels when we press the up arrow. Let's test. Sure enough, when I press, she goes way up. Problem is, she doesn't come back down. To fix this, pull out a repeat block. And after she goes up by one, we want her to come down by 20, five different times. To go down, she needs to go negative 20 and change the number 10 to 5. This should cause her to move back to where she started from after she jumps. Let's try it. Sure enough, she jumps up by 100 but then comes back down to where she started. Perfect. Okay, we're done with our animation. Our character now moves to the right and left with the key presses. And there's an animation that runs if our character is walking, but doesn't run if they're standing. Our character also jumps and comes back to where she started. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it.